Hello and welcome to Ginger Man. Now I know what you're thinking, Ginger Man, I thought you were walking the Ocals in episode 220. Well, I was planning to, but if you remember back to last year, I have a recurring injury on my Achilles and aye, it's, it's sort of flared up a bit and I don't want to be walking uncomfortable. So I thought I'm going to I'm gonna put it off to episode 230 and today I'll go and check out the Kelpies. Aye, random, I know, but here I am, I'm at the Kelpies. It's episode 220. I thought it was going to be Deed here, but it turns out this is a, a popular tourist attraction, so aye, it's going to be a busy day here. So let's get into it. Kelpies, show me what you got. Peace. <laughs> There's their heats. Lots of tourists here. They must have heard about the Kelpies and thought, go to Scotland, go to the Kelpies. It's real nice round here, right? fancy toilets. As you come in. Now, the guy at the gate says I was to buy a ticket up here somewhere. Oh, look, we can get the electric bikes from the park. Can I pass the 30 minutes bike trip? There you go. We've seen these in, I want to say Grangemouth. And we go for bikes. These bad boys. I'll be on an electric bike one day, kicking about a town somewhere. I've heard Americans and Germans so far. We'll play tourist bingo today. We'll see how many different people we can see. Cafe and gift shop. Lovely. I thought this was going to be telling me something. It's telling me something. It's telling me there's a cafe and gift shop. Right, okay. I want to learn about what all this is about. What do the Kelpies mean? What are they for? I've only passed them on the motorway and looked at them and thought, I mean, they look cool, but I don't know what it, what it is. What, what are the Kelpies? We've got a cafe here with like an interactive bit that I just walked inside and took some pictures of and videos and then you come outside you've got some mini kelpies followed by the giant kelpies. It is really busy, I think it's the school holidays too so it's double busy. It's certainly bigger than I thought. It's actually quite massive. Can we get inside a kelpie? No swimming. Now let's have a walk down here. Oh, the water is so calm. In. Oh, this is an actual trail walk. Oh, look. The Charlotte Dundas Heritage Trail. Journey down the new section of canal to Loch One where it enters the River Carron. Now we know all about the Carron, and look at this. We've got We've got all of this. We've got a timeline board. Oh man, I love a timeline board. Pre-1700, the Falkirk area is primarily an agrarian society. So it's all farming. It's all farming up until today. Well, it's not today, it's 10 years ago. So the Kelpies, well the Helix Park opened in 2013 and then the Kelpies followed in 2014, so it's almost been a decade of the Kelpies. Right, I'm going to walk down here along the canal um, because it's very busy at the Kelpies. It's, it 
extremely touristy. Um, I didn't know what to expect. It's way busier than what I thought, but it is the summer. And I guess, you know, people like to come and see iconic images. And in the last decade, I guess the Kelpies have become an iconic image of Scotland. So well done, Falkirk. The Charlotte Dundas Heritage Trail, 1803. This is bro. The Great Canal. The Forth and Clyde Canal opened in 1790, crossing central Scotland. It provided a route for the seagoing vessels of the day between the Firth of Forth and the Firth of Clyde at the narrowest part of the Scottish Lowlands. It is 38.5 miles long and runs from the River Carron at Grangemouth to the River Clyde at Bowling. Here we go. Um, what I've learnt so far about coming across to this side of the bridge, south of the Forth, uh, the importance of the canalways and the rivers and linking Scotland up before we had roads and big lorries and autonomous buses. Talking of autonomous buses, I'm going to have to take a trip on one, I'm going to just give you the lowdown on what it's like to be on a driverless bus with a driver. There we go, so there's the River Carron, and here's the canal. Now if we think back to East Calder, I want to say, when I was in the Almond Del Park, there was the wee aqueduct that took the, the burn water over the river. So you can see the, the importance of the waterways across central Scotland here, and how we've engineered our industry around it. It's so clever. So fascinating, and when you walk around, you know, you really start to take it in and learn and appreciate what it all means. There's like a village here, I don't know if this is actually part of Falkirk. And where does Grangemouth start? Grangemouth's down there somewhere, if you follow this down the river. Flora and fauna. The surrounding area is home to a remarkably diverse wildlife community, including migratory and resident bird species. That's where I am, I'm here. There's the Kelpies. Otters, I'd love to see an otter. Any otters about? There you go, there's the, the River Carron, and then there's the canal. Canal, Carron, Carron, Canal. There you are. We're back over to this side. We've got another sign for the Carron. The River Carron, along with the Forth and Clyde Canal, helped transform the Falkirk area from a small agricultural settlement into one of Britain's major centres of iron founding, helping to trigger the industrial revolution that eventually made Scotland the workshop of the world. Some big claims from Falkirk there. But, you know, the, the importance of these waterways and Falkirk finds itself right in the, the centre and meeting point of all these different rivers and canals. Yeah, historic... Historically, the River Carron powered the mills that ground grain produced on the fertile lands of the Cars and provided a communications link that bound scattered communities together. Throughout its 30 mile journey from Campsy Fells to the sea, the Carron supported agricultural and industry. It was the potential power of the river as well as the link to the Forth and the sea that led the founders of the Carron, that led the founders of the Carron Ironworks to choose the site for their great venture. And there you go, and it goes further into the Carron Ironworks. Oh, real fascinating stuff here. As I say, there's more to this area than just the Kelpies. But I am walking towards the Kelpies again, because I want to go see them close up. Uh, and see if I can mark some more countries off my uh, tourist bingo card. There we go. We're right at the base of the Kelpies. I could touch them. Uh, it's got a wee moat round it. Holy moly, look at it from here. I'm right under its chin. Uh, it's got a wee moat round it, so you can't just jump and touch it. But look, there's a wee platform. It's got a door. We have a wee look in. Now we're, we're getting access inside the Kelpies. 
Kelsey. Inside the Kelpie. I still can't see anyone to tell me what they are. It'd be cool if there was like stairways inside. I think there is a stairway inside, but that should be part of the tour. You get to go to the top of the Kelpie. I've like got sore eyes from keep looking up at it. Hey, I like this, there's loads of canals. I'll come back to the Kelpies, and you know, they're just uh, I'll just keep coming back to them in this episode and wandering around, see what's, see what's all about. This is nice. Little boats, are these little boats you can go and get food on, or are people living in these boats? I've said it before and I'll say it again, I'd love a canal boat. I would be chilling in it all day. Pizza, toilets, shower, if you need a shower. And a sweaty day at the Kelpies. Maybe it's for the people on the boats. This is a bridgeway, there's bridges everywhere. Look at this. This is where the canal feeds into the Karen. Oh wow! <laughs> I love bridges and I love all the waterways, so this is actually really cool around here. I'm I'm more interested in what's around the Kelpies. As much as I love the Kelpies and they're cool, and they draw people in, it's what's around. I think these are little houses for the canal boats. <laughs> I want to live at the Kelpies. You just get your wee... It gets too cold on the canal boat, just get cosied up in your shed house. Amazing. Right, what well, we got? Horse box. Helix North. Loving kisses that way. Falkirk Wheel. Where's the Falkirk Wheel? Let's just have a wee wonder. This is called Kelpies Marina. My address is number 69 Kelpies Marina. Party on the canal boat. <sighs> okay, so you can follow this little path round. And I have a feeling this takes you along by the Karen. We'll have a wee wander down here and see what more there is to be seen. I've not been to Falkirk, but I think I'll get to Falkirk once I've done my locals walk. I've got a few plans now in the brain um, before I do the Oakles walk. Let my let my leg, my Achilles settle down a bit. You know, I can walk, it's just if I do distance walking I feel like I'm gonna put myself in a bit of bother just trying to walk normally. So just have a wee break. I can hear more water. Oh this is cool. Oh, come on. This seems to be where all water comes together. I'm just going to follow this round, this is class. So there you go, come to the Kelpies, you're going to get all different types of walks. But always in the background of the Kelpies. If the Kelpies go out of sight, this episode's over. I have to stay within eyesight of the Kelpies. Look at that, the kelpie head is like coming out of the, the trees. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like walking around here because you are getting to see the kelpies and all these different angles. It looks like there's just one kelpie there. But you and I both know there's two kelpies. And I know what you're thinking. What is a kelpie? I still don't know. Will we ever find out? I guess you have to keep watching to find out what a kelpie is. I mean, you could just Google it on your phone right now whilst watching it and turn the episode off, but you're not going to do that, I hope. Now we're back at Kelpies HQ. I'm going to go see if I can learn what these are without looking at my phone. And I'll tell you why, because my phone's in the car. Unless I walk back to the car, if I can't find out. Mm -hmm. 
There you go. Just walked right round the kill, please. It's hard to look up because it's got an eye. Didn't realise it had eyes. I thought it had no eyes. Although it's cloudy, the, the light is very bright, so you know, every time you look up to look at the the kelpie, try and make eye contact with the kelpie, it's near impossible. What's their names? Dave and Bob. <laughs> the, the least creative naming. I'm pretty sure they have names. Someone tell me the names of the kelpies. But actually, before I do that, I need to know what a kelpie is. Okay, so I got the drone up there, it was wonderful. Um, I know what a kelpie is now, which I will share with you. And I've come to the other side of the Kelpies Park, where the wee woodland walk is. Uh, so you know I'm all about that. And whilst we're in the wee woodland walk, I will share with you what a kelpie is. All the birds that have been spotted in the helix. Oh aye, loads. Yellow hammer. I want to see a yellow hammer. See, when you you think you come to the kelpies and it's just a couple of kelpies, but it's not, there's so much more. There's food, there's a tourist centre, there's the canal, there's the Karen, there's Falkirk, and there's woodland walks. It's got it all. It is midgy season though, eh? So you'll smell a lot of this. <laughs> This is nice, got a wee seat in here, a wee seat in area, oh wow, come on. It is just a wee woodland walk but there's loads of things going on here. Not so we build any things, but all built with what's in the woods already, I like it. This gets you away from the busy part where the tourists where it's really difficult to vlog. But it's good to see it busy and it's only just the start of summer so I imagine as the the tourists come flocking in uh, the Kelpies uh, is a busy spot. I wonder how many people come here per year visiting. But what are the Kelpies I hear you ask? Well, apparently they're a mythical creature that live in the water and when they come to land they take the form of a horse, ready to entice you on it, to then take you to a watery grave. 
Yes, it's as morbid as that. I thought it was going to be something beautiful and magic, like the national animal of Scotland is a unicorn. Wonderful, everyone loves unicorns. But a kelpie? A kelpie's trying to kill you. So, yeah. But there is a sort of murderous and sort of dark past with Scotland, so I guess that makes sense that we have murderous beasts. And we have statues to them, murderous beast statues in Scotland, the Kelpies. <laughs> it's funny. I think it's funny. I've never seen the yellow hammer. I didn't even see any tits whilst I was there. No birds, no tits. Right, there's a couple of interesting sculpture things over here, which I think are also kelpies. One of them looks like a centaur, half man, half horse. Let's check it out. There's a further walk along there which takes you to Falkirk Stadium. Now, I'm a Dunfermline fan. Um, loosely a Dunfermline fan. Dunfermline are rivals with Falkirk, so... You know, I don't know if I could live with myself if I went to the Falkirk Stadium. Sorry, Falkirk. This is cool. I like this. I'd have this in my garden. And then... There we have the unicorn, of course. At last, we had to have a unicorn here. Fist pump the unicorn. Fist pump. Is it got a wee goats? Goatee as well. Oh. I'm not gonna lie, I think I prefer the centaur guy and the unicorn to the kelpies. Mm. I love the kelpies, but you know, not if they're trying to kill you. They're trying to take me to a watery grave. But I guess it signifies the both the danger and the beauty of the water because, you know, the water can kill you just like a kelpie can but a kelpie has a big beautiful statue it looks amazing, it's beautiful just as the water is, well the rocks and the, the glistening of the water it's beautiful, it entices you in but don't get too close that's my interpretation of the kelpies here that's my interpretation of the kelpies because here we are, right in this part where um, all these waterways meet. The Karen, the Burns, the canal, it all meets here. And it's played an important role in the wider aspect of Scotland industry, the Industrial Revolution. And I'm sure we'll learn more about all that when we get to Falkirk eventually. Also, we're talking all about this water. We have this motorway, which is the, the present link between the, the towns and villages and the cities in Scotland, especially Glasgow and Edinburgh. So we've got the, the present with the road, the big motorway that connects us all. We've got the old fashioned waterways that aren't as busy as they once were. There's not big mills all along the Carron, but we have these beautiful monuments, beautiful trails, heritage trails all around to remind us and to enjoy you know, it's not just all about work. There's plenty of time for play here too. But hey, thanks for having me, the Kelpies. It's been an absolute treat. I'm sure I'll be back one day. Thanks for having me. Peace.